Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and it is my privilege to be your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now you join me today for something of a celebratory video because in the last week we have passed a milestone for the channel. We've now achieved 10,000 subscribers which I have to say when I think back when I started the channel a little over two years ago was an unassailable Everest that we were attempting to climb. I know it's a small channel compared to many others which count their subscribers in the millions but for me you know every single person who's in this chaps guide community is somebody like me who shares an interest in the gentlemanly arts of dressing well acting with etiquette and decorum and enjoying the finer things in life at a modest price and that's very much what I'm all about so I am absolutely delighted that all of you have chosen to join me on this journey to Chap Nirvana and for those of you who've been around since the beginning it's been great to share these times with you to have conversations and they're all off the cuff you know there's no script I don't write any preparatory notes generally what I say is what comes to my head so I hope you've enjoyed the the content that has come along in the past stay tuned because nothing's changing there's lots more coming and hopefully uh, you will stay with me on that journey now today as well as thanking you all for being my most valued subscribers over these last two years I'm going to do a product review because you know that's not just uh, you know have the hubris of talking about the successes we've had to continue going forwards in the same way we have to do practical things here and I've only made one video in the past I believe where I have reviewed a alcoholic beverage that was a whiskey called monkey shoulder and I still drink that I've got a bottle in my drinks cabinet at home I love it it's a corker very modestly priced good blended malt whiskey and a similar thing is joining us today but one with a story which is etched in history and today we're being joined by good old Shackleton whiskey now this is a whiskey I've probably been drinking for about the last six months it's got a truly magnificent backstory behind it and that's what we're going to talk about today so Shackleton whiskey here we have it and we are going to test it and have a drink in a moment but let's talk about the name first of all because Shackleton the reason why I was drawn to this bottle was not because of its its reputation as a fine blended malt whiskey but because of the name Shackleton and of course Shackleton refers to the famous polar explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton now I have to say the reason I was drawn to the name Ernest Shackleton always was and always has been one of my greatest personal heroes his story of uh, overcoming adversity on polar expeditions in the early 20th century are the thing of boys own legends and you know if you're not familiar with the story of Ernest Shackleton I would urge you to do yourself a favor and find out more you know get one of the, the many books which are available which talk about Shackleton's journeys the biographies um, about Shackleton or even just look him up on Wikipedia I defy you not to be impressed with this man's life achievements because Ernest Shackleton um, was somebody who knew his life had a path had a meaning and for him he found that direction in Antarctica which at the time we're talking about an era which is today defined as the heroic period of Antarctic uh, exploration at this point in the early uh, in the early 20th century the early 1900s in effect um, the, the South Pole had yet to be achieved by anybody nobody had got to the South Pole and there was something of a global uh, sort of competition to see which country could be the first to mount an expedition to reach the South Pole the jewel in the crown the North Pole had been achieved it's a little bit easier to get to the South Pole lying in the center of the continent of Antarctica is without doubt the world's most inhospitable formidable environment for human beings to exist even to this day a hundred plus years later you know there are no uh, human beings who live permanently on the continent of Antarctica because it is such you know a challenging place to call your home 
Ernest Shackleton was one of the first people uh, who got involved with the expeditions. He joined an expedition being led by probably an even more famous polar explorer, and that's Captain Robert Falcon Scott, who of course perished on his own expedition to seek the South Pole in, I think it was uh, 1911. But Ernest Shackleton, um, he went with Scott initially, and then after having an unsuccessful attempt on the pole with Scott, he mounted his own expeditions. Uh, never successful, he never achieved the pole uh, himself, but uh, the, the method of his expeditions is what has made him such a remarkable individual, because he overcame uh, adversity, he overcame terrible problems, because on his second expedition, uh, known today as the, Trans the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition, um, he journeyed down south on his ship, the Endurance. And unfortunately, whilst getting ready to make an attempt on the pole, the, or cross the, uh, the Antarctic continent by man-hauling, so uh, an unsupported uh, human walking attempt across the continent of Antarctica, well over a thousand miles of unsupported land crossing. Um, unfortunately, the Endurance, Shackleton's ship, got trapped in the ice. The ice formed all around the ship and it crushed the Endurance and it sank. And that left Shackleton and his other 27 members of the expedition trapped on the ice. Their ship sunk, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles from the nearest human habitation and little chance of success, you know, little chance of rescue. Almost a situation of certain death. But Shackleton rose to his own and this is where his legendary uh, sort of reputation as a leader comes to the fore. His his, his mission focus, his strident desire to get his men to safety came to the forefront and he got his men in the lifeboats and they made for, you know, for some sort of safety. They happened upon a small, rocky, inhospitable, uninhabited island called Elephant Island in the South Atlantic, ravaged by storms, freezing cold, a rocky, uh, you know, jetting piece of land in effect. They got to the this island, Elephant Island, and they realised that, you know, there was no way they would be rescued because no rescue ship is going to go past there. Nobody knows where they are. The assumption will be made that they've all been lost as a consequence of their ship being sunk. And there's only one chance for success, and that is to take one of the lifeboats and attempt a crossing of this perilous South Atlantic Sea to get to the nearest human habitation, which is in South Georgia, uh, where there's a whaling island some 820 miles away. So Shackleton and five of his companions uh, get on board their lifeboat, their open lifeboat, and they make their way 820 miles across some of the most formidable seas on the planet, freezing cold, no chance of any sort of sleep or anything like that. It was a horrific situation, life and death. If their lifeboat foundered and they were to be lost, so would all of their companions back on Elephant Island for sure. They would run out of rations, they wouldn't be uh, rescued, and death through, uh, you know, starvation and so on would follow. Amazingly, Shackleton led that small uh, rescue party, in effect, across that ocean, and they landed on South Georgia. Then they had to make their way across the, the interior of South Georgia, something which had never been achieved by a human being before either. They eventually got to the whaling station at Gritviken, and uh, they mounted a rescue expedition. And to his remarkable um, you know, credit, every single member of the expedition were rescued. There was no loss of life. They all managed to come back to great acclaim to Great Britain. The expedition, essentially a failure, but, but rendered as a success in the public's opinion because faced with these overwhelming odds, Shackleton had led his expedition to rescue. Now there is a famous quote which compares the relative qualities of the famous explorers of the heroic period of Antarctic discovery, and it is this. For scientific discovery, choose Scott. For speed and efficiency, select Amundsen. But when disaster strikes and all hope is lost, get down on your knees and pray for Shackleton. And it implies that regardless what happens, Shackleton will get you through. 
No, actually, largely, uh, Shackleton had been forgotten after uh, you know the the golden period of exploration had ended, and most public opinion sort of settled on Scott because he perished on his attempt to to the pole. But in recent years, in the last sort of thirty years. Uh, Shackleton has had a renaissance and we now appreciate his superhuman efforts of leadership and, uh, and ability to, to save people. And there's an interesting story behind our, our guest Licker today because in 1907 on one of his earlier expeditions called the Nimrod Expedition, Shackleton took 25 cases of uh, McKinley's whiskey with him. Uh, as you know, uh, a motivational boost for his expedition members. And after the expedition ended, they repatriated to the UK and they left behind their hut, which still stands in Antarctica today, protected by the Antarctic sort of historical society. In 2007, there were some renovation works being undertaken to the hut, and underneath the hut, frozen into the ice, two cases of McKinley's whiskey, as ordered by Ernest Shackleton, were discovered frozen solid into a block of ice. Now they were chipped out, they were repatriated to uh, New Zealand, and it turned out that several of the bottles were in perfect functioning order. Uh, they were an exact, you know, uh, they were as they were a hundred years previous. Um, and one of the bottles, I believe, was flown back to the United Kingdom, to Scotland, where it was analysed and painstakingly recreated by uh, a master blender called Richard Patterson, who is behind the liquor that we're about to test today. So, as we see, Shackleton is proudly emblazoned on the bottle, and it is based on an antique blend of McKinley's whiskey. Now, I believe the uh, originating house behind this whiskey today is um, White and Mackay, which is a rather large whiskey house. Uh, and I should tell you, this whiskey is not classed as particularly expensive, it's modestly priced. Um, I paid £18 for this bottle. It was on a bit of a discount in my local supermarket, but routinely it'll be for sale for between £24-25. So try and get it for less than £20 and you will be laughing. I tell you, this is a superb whiskey for its price. This is not my first bottle, I have to say, so um, it looks the part. It looks like a traditional bottle of whiskey. It's got raised uh, lettering upon it. On the front it says Shackleton and on the back, interestingly, there is raised lettering in a quote. And the quote said, I believe it is in our nature to explore, to reach out into the unknown and it's signed Ernest Shackleton. So really this is a whiskey for the adventurous of nature. But as with any consumable, what does it taste like? That is the important thing. So I'm gonna subject this whiskey to two tests today. Firstly, I am going to test it in its natural form. And then I'm gonna test it in the way that I would actually drink it in real life format. So I'm gonna give myself a nice big slug here why not? It's a sunny Saturday afternoon, and I am, after all, celebrating 10,000 subscribers. You chaps out there who've made this all possible. So, here we go. Obviously, crystal glass. Nothing else which can be used for the consumption of whiskey, in my opinion. Let's take the nose. It smells good, but I'm going to tell you exactly how it should smell, because there are some notes which I have, which I took from the from the uh, website to give us an indication. Now it should um, it should smell of vanilla, toffee, apple, cinnamon, and ginger uh, on the nose. So can I detect any of that? Well, it, there is a, a vanilla-y sweetness to it. I would certainly say that. A, a toffee essence in there somewhere. But it, it smells rather pleasant. It smells mild. Some whiskies, when you take the nose and, you know, not just sticking the nose into it, but let's just swill it around and smell the fragrance as it emanates. I would say it smells quite mild. Yeah, there, there is, it's a very attractive fragrance, that's all I can say. Do I detect the toffee apple, the cinnamon? Not really. I don't have a, uh, a sort of specialised nose in this game, but it smells rather nice. Let us see what it tastes like. Now, let me refresh myself. What should it taste like? Well, looking at my notes, it should taste of dark sugar, sweet dried fruits, glazed pineapple, 
And to finish, as an aftertaste, we should determine hot mulled wine praline chocolate with a whisper of bonfire smoke. How interesting. Let's see if it lives up to its reputation. Mmm. Now some whiskies, when I when I take them, it catches your breath. This is mild. It is smooth. Not let's not forget it is a blended malt whisky. So you know many people would look down at one of these. It's not aged as such. So it is quite a simple whisky really. There's a sweetness. It feels quite viscous on the tongue, quite thick. Try again. A vanilla for sure. Maybe even a little citrus in there as well, a citrusy essence. Yeah, I can't say I can taste hot mulled wine. There is the slight smokiness there as well, which it mentions. I do get that, I do get that. Now, it's all very well sitting there drinking it like this, but let's be honest, most of us are not gonna drink neat whiskey from a glass. In my life, I tend to have a mixer because I enjoy my drink to last a little longer. So today, I think I am just gonna add some ice, which is how I would typically drink my whiskey, and also some Indian tonic water. This makes up, you know, it bulks it up, and uh, it makes it rather pleasant to taste. This is a fever tree. Uh, tonic water. Let that settle in there for a moment. I don't drink a great deal, I have to admit folks. Um, really less now than I ever have, to be honest. So for me, and you know, don't feel sorry for me, I've drunk enough in my life, that's probably why I've, you know, reduced the drinking at this stage. But for me it's important to enjoy what I do drink, because for me now at this stage of life, having drunk as much as I have, I've got no time for poor alcohol. You know, I don't want cheap stuff. I don't want stuff that doesn't bring me joy. And I have to say, this is probably the third or fourth bottle of Shackleton I have drunk now. And this whiskey has brought me quite a lot of joy. But let me just test it for you with some tonic water as I would typically drink it at home, relaxing with my wife, you know, over an aperitif. You add some volume to the to the glass, and it really brings a different uh, nuance to it. It makes it a lovely sipping um, whiskey, and I really enjoy that. It's you know you, you can blend it with any uh, any other cocktails. You can make it into whatever you like. If you go on the Shackleton Whiskey website, they have some suggested um, cocktails. Many of them sound great, I have to say, but for me, whiskey is something to be enjoyed either on its own or with something simple like tonic water or soda water, just to bulk it up, make it a more long-lived experience. Let's try that again. As I said, it's all of those things that we talked about earlier. There's a sweetness there for sure. That vanilla comes through. There's that wispy bit of smoke. Um, there, there is a slight fruitiness for sure uh, and it describes, now it's coming to me, it describes dried fruit I think and glazed pineapple, I don't get that, but there is a slight fruitiness like um, like a, a Christmas pudding-y type flavour which is very charming I have to say. Try again. That is glorious. That is a proper gentleman's drink and I'm I have to say, I shall enjoy sitting here after I turn the camera off and drinking that at a leisurely pace. I have to make sure the bottle stays over there though, because it may disappear. So there we go. I think uh, it is a great homage to the, the, the most magnificent of all polar explorers in my mind, Sir Ernest Shackleton. It's a quite straightforward whiskey in many respects. It's not expensive. Um, it's only 40% uh, bottled alcohol. So, you know, it's not super strong. The flavour is mild, it's pleasing. If you enjoy a nice, pleasant whisky, this is going to be right up your tree. I've known many other reviewers have waxed lyrical about this. They say it's for its price point. It is a magnificent delivery of a blended malt whisky, and I don't think you can get better for your money. Um, I 
I would have to say I prefer this to monkey shoulder. Monkey shoulder perhaps is a little sharper, but a little bit stronger. For me, the mildness gets me with this one. It's mellow. It's the sort of whiskey which puts me in a relaxed state of mind. And that's kind of why I drink. So exactly what I am looking for. And as I say, I think Ernest would be pleased that his whiskey is still around today. Now Shackleton's story to end it um, didn't end well, or perhaps to some might say it did. Um, he attempted a third expedition as a leader to Antarctica with some um, lofty goals. Unfortunately, um, he suffered what most people believe to be a fatal heart attack whilst his ship, the Quest, was just off uh, South Georgia, uh, that place where he was eventually rescued from. And he is buried today in South Georgia. Many people who visit that most far-flung parts of the world uh, will go and uh, pay their respects to Ernest Shackleton's grave uh, on South Georgia. And yeah, the great man, only 46 years of age at the time of his life, but he was known to be a man who lived life to the extreme. You know, he smoked, he drank, and he undertook, you know, near-death experiences on a regular basis. It caught up with him, but uh, his legacy, which is left behind, is one of one of the world's greatest leaders, one of the world leaders of men, I should say, not sort of leaders of states, you know, and things like that. He was a man for whom his people had fierce loyalty. They talk about him as somebody who, you know, was classless in his nature. He, he had the right thing to say to everybody. And often when I think of a perfect chap, a gentleman, for me, I am envisaging Sir Ernest Shackleton, uh, a man with remarkable qualities. And as I say, I would urge you to find out more about Sir Ernest if you're unfamiliar with his life works. There's much out there that can can educate you. So, there we go, fellows. As I make a, take another slug of this wonderful stuff, again, I would like to thank you for, you know, helping the channel achieve that 10,000 subscriber milestone. Of course, it's just a number. It means nothing, really. We continue on as we always have. Nothing will change. You keep coming back here, and I will keep giving you this uh, wonderful content that we try and bring to you. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, of course, I would encourage you to give us a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber and you've found this by chance, you know the drill, click the red button, come on the journey with us. And if you'd like to practically support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. If you go to the show notes below, you will find a link to our Buy Me A Coffee page. And if you wonder what happens to that Buy Me A Coffee donation you make, We've now accumulated sufficient funds, which mean we can start improving the content that you see on the channel. So the first way I'm going to invest your kind donations is to take a trip to London on the train. I'm going to stay in London overnight at my club, the Union Jack Club, and I'm going to take you on a walking tour of my favourite places in the city of London, possibly the chap capital of the world. Yes, indeed, you can expect a walk down Saville Row with me. You can come to my favourite place in the world, German Street, and we'll even go up the Burlington Arcade and see some of those things which have aspired me on my journey to Chap Nirvana. And we'll be doing that sometime soon, in the very near future, when I get the opportunity to take a little time off work. So, until the next time we meet, gentlemen, I will raise a glass to you, take a sip, and I will salute you as I always do. And I will say, take care. I'll see you again soon.